Hey, do you know what this thing is? Well, if you don't, you're gonna find out today because this video is all about our irrigation system. So I'm definitely gonna get into all the nuts and bolts with our irrigation system, parts, all that kind of stuff. But before I get into that, I want to say that part of the irrigation system that you guys need to figure out is how to design your fuel blocks to make sure that they work with your irrigation. That way, the layout will allow proper irrigation and then you know which kind of equipment that you need to buy. All right, I have you guys up on the pile of wood chips again so I can get this overhead view. Now it's important to see how I laid out the farm and also the irrigation because to get a good irrigation setup, it's really based on how you design your farm. Now, I made a lot of changes since last year with moving beds and stuff like that. And so now we have two blocks, field blocks. They're each 13 beds. Uh, the beds are 50 feet long and the walkways are 14 inches. And there's a four foot wide path in the middle there running between the two field blocks. Now the way I have this set up is I have two sets of four sprinklers and each one is on a separate zone and I'll get more into that. Um, I've seen farms such as uh, Rose Creek and Steadfast and they run four sprinklers uh, for a hundred foot bed because they have hundred foot beds. We have 50 foot beds So um, what I did here to sort of adjust for that they do 12 and a half feet from the end and then 25 feet between the ones in the middle and then a 12 and a half feet at the end, but what I did is I did 12 and a half feet from the end and The middle sections are 26 and a third feet So you get an extra one and a third feet per and that'll cover that four feet in the middle It seems to be working great um, and so the reason why the sprinklers are this way is because I set the farm up this way because I knew I was gonna have to irrigate it so let's get more into that. So you can see how I've had it broken up. Um, if you just have one row of sprinklers, they work really well with three beds on either side. So as I said, block of 13, keep with me here. So we got three here, we have seven in the middle, and then we have three more over there. So as I said, it works really well with three on either side, but in the middle we have seven, so that's really three and a half from each sprinkler so that one bed in the middle kind of gets hit from both sides and it works out really, really well. So the key to the, all of our sprinklers here, these are called wobblers is what everybody calls them. Um, they're made by a company called Senninger and these are the Excel wobblers and they come in two different models. They come in a mid angle and a high angle. These are the high angles, just how high of an angle the water gets thrown off. And they're really awesome because they're pretty cheap. They're probably about 10 or 12 bucks a piece. Um, and there are little nozzles in the top which you can change out to give you more flow. Um, and it'll also throw the water a little bit further depending on which one. And so it's a very simple design. Um, there's basically not much to go wrong with these. The water comes shooting up through the nozzle, hits the top, and these things spin around and throw water in a circular pattern. I like them because they're super simple. So let me show you about how I built my risers. Let's talk about how these are constructed. They're constructed, they're pretty simple, and the parts are cheap. So we have the wobbler at the top. They come either half inch or three quarter inch threaded. Everything here, keep in mind, is three quarter. So all the PVC and all the irrigation line, all three quarters. So we have a three quarter inch female connected. And then that's glued to a piece of PVC. These are 36 inch pieces of PVC for my risers. And at the bottom here, this one's a little bit different because this is the end of the line. Um, so on the left, we have a special fitting and I'll talk about those and connects to irrigation line. Uh, this is three quarter inch irrigation line. I bought this stuff at Lowe's, but you can buy it from an irrigation company too. Um, and on the right, it, we have a valve. And the valve is cool because if we want to flush the lines out, like if we just make a new connection or we got dirt in there somehow or whatever, you just open that up, turn the water on, and it flushes out all the lines, gets all the dirt out of there, which is cool. Sometimes dirt gets in for whatever reason. If you made a connection, some dirt just slipped into the, the piece of pipe, but um, you'll notice because one of the sprinklers will stop working and you have to go and clean out the nozzle. The other nice thing is when it goes below freezing, you can open up this valve and disconnect uh, the water at the source and all the water will drain out so it won't freeze up. And the way that I have this connected and standing up, I'll show you. I have a three foot U-post that's banged into the ground. Got that at Lowe's. I just like how low profile this is. It really just kind of disappears and you don't really see it so much. Um, and then these are just attached with two zip ties here. And remember to use the black ones. The black ones are UV resistant, the white ones are not. All right, so we're sort of working backwards here, but I just have three quarter inch irrigation line here. And the reason why I chose to do this is, A, it's pretty cheap, and B, it's flexible. If you need to move things around or shorten things, um, it makes it pretty easy. And so the, the key here, this is one of the, uh, the non-end risers. 
you can see it's got the same setup. The only difference is at the bottom, we have the same three quarter inch T, but we just have quick connect fittings for the irrigation line on both sides. So this just runs down. I'll just walk you down here. There's another, and then just down to the beginning. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward here. I have four, uh, four heads on each line, which in each one is a separate zone. Water comes out here. As I said, we got two zones. I have it kind of tidy. It's all 90 degrees to go around the greenhouse and then around the beds, and then it comes in uh, from over here and then it goes across. And so just to give you another view here, you can see a total of eight sprinkler heads uh, with two different zones. Gonna take you under our porch here. It's a total mess under here, it's very dirty, but I just wanna show you all the little parts of our irrigation system so you can see exactly how we do it. Firstly, we have a line that comes right off our main line and it skips our whole house filter so we're not burning through filters as much because we do use a lot of water for irrigation. The first thing it goes through, is just a physical particle filter. Um, this one I had just laying around, I don't even know where it came from. Uh, I think it just came with the house when we bought it for something else, so I just am using it. And it allows me to back flush it. So uh, the reason I have this in there is um, if you have um, any particulate in your water, and we have well water, so it's a little, little silty, um, it'll clog up the valves and keep them from running. I'll talk more about that. We have a, I don't know, we had a T and a valve here so I could add another line, which I'm not using right now. Comes over to our manifold. Yeah, I know this could be definitely tidied up, but I just want to show it to you guys. Just build this all out of PVC. Um, it's got an open port here, and I usually connect uh, another just hose to it. And I have three solenoids here that are controlled by the timer. Again, this is all three quarter. The water comes in here, I have a valve to shut it off. I want to isolate the manifold. Um, all the solenoids are, I believe they're three quarter inch uh, NPT, so not hose thread. So I have it converted to hose thread here um, because I was using um, a dead another filter and um, this right here is a, a pressure reducer that I use for the drip irrigation. So as I said, I have four here. Um, this one's manual. This is for one zone for the overhead, second zone for the overhead, and then the drip is there as well. I will post a link for these solenoids. And then here is the controller up here. This guy works great. I've tried a couple. This one you can do up to six zones. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, this one plugs in. Uh, there's some battery operated ones too, and I don't remember if this one can be battery, but uh, I have an outlet down here, so it's just, I just plug it in. I don't have to worry about the batteries and stuff. Um, so this guy will, you can wire in as up to six solenoids. It's really programmable. I actually really like this thing. It's been really reliable. I've tried some other ones. I tried some Orbits, and I just didn't really like them. So this one has been great, and it's like 50 bucks, so it's pretty reasonable. Um, what else can I show you here? Um, I like the solenoids because the individual solenoids because you can just swap them out and they're they're fairly inexpensive and you can add on as you want and you can just wire them into the controller, so it works pretty well. Just to give me another view, I also have a pressure gauge up here, which is not needed but helpful. Um, so we're looking at nothing's running right now in terms of irrigation. We're a little over 40 psi, which is fine. We're on a well, and so it'll fluctuate as the pressure drops and the pressure tank drops in pressure and then the well pump kicks back on. But it's nice for troubleshooting. Um, if while it's running, it starts dropping really low, you know that you're trying to pull too much water. So for your pump or for your the settings on your um, your pressure tank. So that's, that's kind of a nice little thing to add in there. And I think that's about it for under here, but I just want to show you all the fittings. Again, more of these quick fittings and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I used to have pressure reducers on the overheads, but I just run them wide open now and it seems to be okay. Make sure you have some sort of physical water filtration coming into your water system. Otherwise, uh, if there's any bit of dirt or anything in there and it gets into one of the solenoids, I had this problem where the solenoid wouldn't close because there was a little bit of material in there and it just couldn't close all the way. And so water would just run all night long in the slow drip and just cause all this wasted water, but also just pools out there. And the other thing is make sure you have some sort of um, water physical filtration before your drip system. So what I do is I showed you underneath the house there, I just have for the, for the whole system. So let's look at some of the parts that I use. A lot of the stuff I mentioned I get from Lowe's or Home Depot, like all the PVC fittings, the U-Post, um, the irrigation line I get from Lowe's. They sell it in 100 and I think maybe 500 foot sections. It's three quarter inch, as I said. Uh, all the other fittings and stuff I get from Drip Depot, online company, and I am not sponsored by them for any means. I've just bought stuff from them and had good experience. Prices are good, selection's good. Um, I use these, these quick connect fittings. Uh, I forget what they're called, but 
They come in all different styles, which is great. And as, as I said, they're all three quarter. They make elbows. Um, they make straight connectors, which are great uh, for splicing in pieces or adding a little bit of length. These are these come super handy. Definitely order a couple extra of those. Um, as I said, they, they pretty much make any connection you have. These are the ones that I've been buying. Um, they make this one. This is a garden, a female garden hose, which attaches at the other side of the solenoids. Um, this was the ones I use at the bottom of the uh, the tees. This is three quarter inch uh, male thread to the quick fitting. They also make full tees, all that stuff. So another thing about the wobblers, which I mentioned before, is uh, if you need to take out the nozzle, like if it gets, it's a pretty small opening. I don't know if you can see that. There, there you go. It's a pretty small opening. Um, and sometimes if you have anything in the line, it might get clogged. Or if you want to change out the nozzles, uh, they, you can do that. So it's pretty straightforward. I, this is a 5 8 inch, inch wrench. I use the closed part to just crack it open. Um, don't over tighten this or you can break it. It's just all plastic. And then this guy unscrews, comes out, and you can see it right there. These nozzles pop out. And if I can hold these up for you guys, you can see that these are the different colors. These are the gold, the lime, and the lavender, and the whole sizes are different. Just want to show you that I found that when I was trying to put this together, this information wasn't just laid out. There's a lot of uh, research done. I also contacted the company Senninger and had asked them some questions and they were very helpful too. So I guess they are approachable uh, if you do have questions. Do go ahead and order your wobblers. Um, you can buy them with different colors and then you can buy extra nozzles too. So definitely get a couple so you can try them. Uh, right now I'm using the gold, which is the smallest size opening. It seems to work pretty well. As I mentioned earlier, the, the higher, that's the number six gold, the number seven green, and then the number eight lavender. So I bought a couple to try them. Uh, so they'll throw more water and uh, they'll throw it a little bit further. So you have to keep that all in mind. I start with the smallest one and then work your way up. But it's, it, it, for my setup right now, the gold has been working pretty well. Another big part of the discussion is where your water comes from. We're on a private well here and you have to be concerned about a couple of things with your water source. Are you municipal water? Do you have a well? And if you have a municipal source, you gotta think about what's in your water, if it's heavily chlorinated, all that stuff. I don't concern myself with that because we're on a private well. Now, the thing about private well water is a couple things. When you don't have electricity, you don't have water, so keep that in mind. Uh, we don't lose power here a ton, but when we do, it's, it's, it's annoying, so we're considering adding a generator to our house anyways. The biggest thing about wells is the output that you can pull from a well. Now, our well pump uh, went out last year and so when the guys were here to replace it I asked them a million questions about flow rate and pressure and all that stuff. So I'm good now I They said basically I can pull what I want uh, with that pump and I'm gonna be okay now The, the pumps are rated for the amount of water that, that that should be draining into the well So hopefully that's all been sorted out already Now that's why I can't run all eight of these sprinklers at the same time I have to run them in two zones. I don't have enough flow and pressure to do that. So if you run the wobbler, they run on pretty low pressure. You can run them down to 15 or 20 PSI, but if you don't have enough, they don't operate correctly. Uh, so you have to play with them a bit and see how much pressure you can really pull and how many uh, gallons per minute. And so those calculations, you can find that information online uh, with the wobbler heads uh, based on uh, the pressure and then the size of the, um, the nozzle will we'll determine how much gallons per minute is used per head and also how far it throws the water. So keep that all in mind when you're setting it up. Uh, you might have restrictions on gallons per minute or pressure or things like that. Also, if you're in a more urban situation and you can't just throw water wherever you want, as what the wobblers do, they throw that water in a circular pattern, um, you might be looking at impact sprinklers so you know, you're not spraying on sidewalks or people, other people's places and cars and stuff like that. So if you're in a more urban area, you might want to think about impact sprinklers. Um, the other option is drip, and I have drip on one place on the farm, and it's in our high tunnel. Uh, I really don't like drip irrigation. Uh, there are places for it. Um, we don't have a water shortage here, um, so I can be a little bit more wasteful with the wobblers. Um, it's just, for me, it's a lot of plastic, and the other part of it is every time you flip a bed, you have to move them around, and I... I've cut them before when harvesting with a knife and so I just they're not my favorite and so for me with with my high rotation crops that I'm growing you know beds are getting turned over multiple times a season the overhead is just really nice it's also great for irrig uh, for getting stuff to germinate because you can really throw down quite a bit of water to really get the ground wet 
Also, I just like how you can see how wet the ground gets. With drip, it's kind of like I set a timer and then I just watch the plants to see how they perform. But with overhead, you can, you can definitely see it. Another thing that's great about overhead is in the summertime, if you're growing greens and it's really hot, I'm in central North Carolina, it gets pretty hot uh, at least half the year here. Um, I have smaller um, sets of time where I throw water out there and uh, do multiple uh, timers per day so that um, you know I can cool down the greens. So just sometimes in the middle of the day even, I can throw the water on for five minutes and just cool down the greens a little bit, the leaves, and so that really helps the plants get through the, the middle part of the day, so that's nice too. So with all that said, there's a lot in this, um, there's a lot to talk about, a lot to help you decide. You don't have to spend a fortune on irrigation. I don't remember how much this costs altogether, but it's, it's really not that bad. Um, I do have it on a timer, uh, as I showed you, which is great for if you need to go away for the day or you're just out off the farm. Um, but I often just keep an eye on things. Like if we're getting a big, big heavy rain, I got to make sure I turn it off. So it's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. And throughout the season, like between the spring, summer, and fall, you'll have to have different, different settings sort of. And there's no right answer. You have to figure it out for yourself. That's your job as a farmer or gardener. Um, so let me show you a little bit about our drip irrigation. Um, I'm constantly struggling with this, but um, it does work. And uh, one of the main reasons is that I do tomatoes in there in the summer, and that really does well with drip. So water comes off the solenoid here. This is right next to under my porch where I just showed you guys before. Comes in here. Um, there's actually a T here. Might be hard to see. And so what happens here is the water goes into, into the high tunnel, but it also goes out uh, down the line here. And the reason for that is it's called a flow through system. And I have a header on each side. And that way, if there's a clog somewhere in the line, um, it, the water can get uh, around it because it's coming in from both sides. So there's a header on this side and there's also a header on the other side. Header on this side, I have quick couplings on either side of each bed so I can just remove the whole set at a time. And I have these um, valves here and they just you punch a hole and they pop in. Not my biggest fan, they do tend to leak once in a while so take some repairs. Uh, this drip tape is a 15 mil, I think it's eight inch spacing. I'll post a link for it. It's the Aqua Tracks, and uh, it's been it's been great. I, I've had no complaints about it at all. Um, right now, I have I have each bed set up for f up to four. Uh, gives me a little bit of flexibility. When I'm not using some, I just turn them off. So this one's got two because I just have tomatoes plants, and I'm going to interplant some basil in here eventually. So I'll add another line. In the middle here, I have two sets of tomatoes. So I have three lines, and the same on the on the right side as I have two lines here. Now, the other thing, you guys saw I like to put those drains at the end of the line. I did the same thing here. And so I have a drain valve right here. And so I can drain this out pretty easily or flush the lines is actually super important because you wanna make sure there's nothing in there to clog up the, the, the emitters that's in the drip tape. So each of these, um, what's neat about this drip tape is that there are emitters uh, built in so you don't have to um, screw anything else in. They just, they're ready to go just as is. Down on the other side of the tunnel, you can't see that flow through line because it's buried under this uh, the wood chips and stuff here, but is where it comes in right here. And then we have another header on this side. And as I said, that's because if there's a clog somewhere in the drip line, you wanna make sure that uh, the water can still get beyond that clog. So the water goes in from both sides. So you have to just make sure you open up both valves, uh, the valves on both sides. So it's exactly the same setup on this side with another drain valve at the end there so we can flush out the line and drain it. Got the sprinklers on. I think there's a good example. You can see how it's it just spins around and throws the water everywhere. Yeah, it throws water a little bit off the beds too, but the simplicity of it, the price, how well they work, they're just great. Love the wobblers. Everything I can think of about my irrigation system, I hope you found it useful. As you've noticed about my videos, I tried to include as many details as possible. I know it's overwhelming when you're either starting out or you're redesigning things and you want to make it run really well. I really focus on efficiency and simplicity with pretty much everything I try to do, and I try to do as much research as I can uh, beforehand. So with that in mind, like just look at a lot of people's setups if, if they're sharing their information and put together what makes sense for you. Just keep in mind when you're designing your system, things I talked about, where's your water coming from? Is it municipal? Is it a well? What's your pressure and uh, volume restriction? Stuff like that. Is overhead right for you? Is drip right for you? Uh, and you know, really think about that. Design your blocks to match your irrigation system. It's a lot harder to do it the other way around. You're going to be unhappy with coverage or you're going to have any extra sprinkler zones, lines, things like that. So as, as I said, I put a lot of thought into my field blocks here and how I set it up so the irrigation could be as simple as possible. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. You guys know what to do now, and we'll see you in the next one.